<laughs> Hello guys, welcome to my testing world. Behind me you see the uh, mob farm we're going to be building today. I built it in survival on my single player world. Usually I play survival on a server with my sons. You know this if you watch my other videos, but I have this side uh, game going. And uh, having built a lot of mob farms and um, I just didn't want to have too much bother. Why build a slime farm and a mob farm, maybe even a specific uh, creeper farm or something, when all you need in the single player world is this thing behind me. Let's first uh, take a look at how it works in my uh, survival world. And you can see it, it's, it's a crazy efficient farm for a single player world. I don't know if it's a, enough for a multiplayer world with like uh, 15 players or something, but I get my gunpowder for my rockets, I get my slime balls, I even get the occasional endermen, uh, ender pearls, uh, because they cannot, when the water is uh, flushing, they cannot uh, teleport away. I get witch droppings uh, and uh, yeah, more than I need, more than I need. So why build two farms, one slime and one general mob farm or one specific um, creeper farm or something when you get all this in one farm? So let's go down and look at it. By the way, this is my, uh, this is my cave that I'm building, my cave base. I haven't done one of those in years, but I kind of, kind of like this orange but that's not what we're here for nope um, in here there it is you can see it's basically just a big hole dug out uh, it starts at um, up here it starts at level 43 and all the way down here it ends at level 6 and the uh, it's precisely the shape of um, chunk, uh, a slime chunk, and then a bit to allow for all the mobs to drop down. I'm not sure we can get any droppings. Uh, well, we can't get any while I'm in spectator because that doesn't uh, work. But if we can create it, maybe, maybe if I stand here, I will activate the upper spawning layers, spawning platforms, and we can see some droppings. But in just a minute, we will go to my creative world and I can show you how it all works. I'm not going to do a block by block tutorial because uh, this design, this diamond shape design with water flushing is done before by a lot of people. Um, I'm, th I'm thinking it was originally Nimbums, MC Nimbums idea and I will put a link to his Fun Farm series uh, in the description and he has a, he's a he's a very good cool guy to follow he has all kind of statistics about it if you want to get really into it um, the only part that's new if you can say it like this is at least I haven't found anyone else on YouTube doing it is putting this farm underground in a slime chunk because it has to be underground because as you probably know slimes only spawn in in if in slime chunks below level 39 um, so it has to be in a slime chunk and i kind of like that uh, that it has to be underground that is because in my world i mean these are usually something up in the air in the sky and it doesn't doesn't work in my medieval worlds. Of course, you can put them far, far away, but then you have to go there every time you have to collect something or you want to AFK. So I like, I've always liked having my uh, mob farms underground. And um, I really do like only having to do dig out for one farm, not one slime farm and one mob farm. Um, and the only contribution I made really about uh, uh, other than that is this killing mechanism that are actually able to uh, handle all the different kinds of mobs big slimes spiders witches um, yeah even witches I mean you probably know if you've built a, uh, some kind of mob farm before that if you don't have a 
very long drop that kills the witches instantly. They will stand there and whine and whine forever because lava uh, in itself or a campfire won't kill them. They, uh, they drink healing potions and they will just stay there and block the mob cap. Um, but not in this farm. In this farm, they might, might take a few minutes, but they will die. Everything that comes down here, except the bats, will die. And with these uplifting words, let's return to my um, creative world. Back in my test bowl, you can see that uh, the mobs are spawning and they're dropping. And I think it's easier here to go in and have a closer look at the killing mechanism. Uh, yeah, it's harsh, but it's also very, very efficient. I mean, everything, everything dies in there. Yeah, but I say everything, but how about slimes? Uh, because this is not a slime chunk. I don't even know if there is slime chunks in like these creative worlds. But we need to have some slimes just to show uh, how it goes with slimes. So let's see if they don't jump out the side like you do, probably. Yep, bye. Uh, you can see slides going in, uh, slimes going in here as well. And they're basically dying like any other mobs. Sometimes they go in like that and just die. Sometimes they get uh, into the smaller ones first and then the smaller ones and they go in. But eventually, uh, and usually very fast, they die. And that's the purpose of this. It also kills slimes. Yeah. And how about then uh, witches? Well, Let's try and drop in a couple of witches. See what happens. Because, as I said, witches can heal themselves. If they don't have a long drop and they just stand on magma, they will not die. But you see in here, they get suffocated. They get suffocated and get burned on the feet. So eventually, even though it might take a while because they still heal themselves, they will die in this machine. Um, and if they find the middle and they keep getting pushed into the middle, they will be able to survive just a little bit longer. But when other map, maps, maps are coming and uh, pushing them around, they will die. Let's just see how long it takes for a witch to die this way. You can see if they move, they just get caught by another one. That was one. And she moved from the middle, and then now she's there. Yeah, maybe it's not a pretty sight, but she got out. She will get caught again. One died there. One died there. You see, you get the picture. It works. Um, now, as I said, I won't be doing a block by block tutorial. Uh, what I will do is give you some pointers because this farm is basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, a mob farm that has been around for quite a while. I suggest you look at the uh, description, the link I put in the description to Nimbom and his Fun Farm series. But <clears throat> uh, what's not uh, standard is the killing mechanism, so I will build that block by block, even though I'm truly not good at block by block tutorials, I will do it and I will give you some pointers. Uh, first of all, you have to find a slime farm. How do you find a slime chunk? How do you find a slime chunk? Well, if you're branch mining for diamonds, you might find, or you're caving, you might run across a slime. 
And what you do is you put up walls. If it's spawned within walls, then it's a slime chunk. You can also uh, use F3 and then G and then show chunk borders like this. This is a chunk, this is a chunk, you probably know this, but um, and you can use something like uh, um, Biome Finder if you don't consider it cheating to find the slime chunks in your world and then you'll be able to quickly uh, find a nearby slime chunk. And what you have to do then is stick down to, if I just put on F3 General, here you can see on the left hand side of my, my screen, you can see X, Y, Z, it says, it says minus 150.397-43. 43 is the level height. If I jump, it gets higher. 44, 43, 44, 43, 44, 43. And you have to get down to level 43 in your slime chunk. And then you have to, have to dig out. Actually, you don't have to dig out all of this because the only thing you need at level 43 is, is this uh line of repeaters uh and then you have to get down with uh, um, a distance of three blocks and then mine out all the chunk how do you do this i mean survival is different uh i will try and show you uh if if we're saying that this is um level 43 then you will put water down and you will go through it like this while you're mining out. Uh, and you mine out the one that, that is the level and then one, two, three. And then you just mine until you hit the chunk border. So have chunk border turned on and then you mine to hit chunk border. The water, even though there's something very weird about the water mechanics in my creative testing world will give you uh, first of all it will give you an outline of where to mine the platforms because what you need to do is like this and then you need to do like this and always diagonal this should be water and it will be water as soon as you change the water uh, to, to a, a bucket um, that's being put straight down here. Let's do this. I think it was this one, right? And now you see it flows to the edge. If we imagine that this is level 43, level up there, what you need is a dropper. A dispenser. And then you need observers. If this is level 43 and this is the middle, what you have to do is you have to take a dropper and go around and place it there. And then you have to take, you have not put, there shouldn't be anything in it, just an empty dropper. And then you oh this water then you kind of place no and you kind of place this pointing downwards and then it gets difficult so what i like to do in survival is i punch out this so i can get down like this and then i can place another one right there and then i can get back up and this time i place a dispenser with the face up and I put in a water bucket so and then I go down and then I take two hmm uh, yeah not easy with all this running water and then I do I don't know what's underneath here is it a problem? 
Yeah, probably is. That just ruined the water down there, but that's why you should do last. But then you put in another one, and then you go up, and then you take a dispenser, pointing upwards, and put in a water bucket. And then you kind of close off these on your way up, and you do this for all seven layers. Now, finally, to get this all going, you will have to have this repeater line that you've seen on the other side and repeater and comparator and some redstone dust is all you need. You will put it like so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then you will go the other way. One, and of course you connect it up with redstone at this end, and then you take a comparator at this end and one redstone dust there, and you take a liver. Um, now we've got to get rid of this water if we want to see it working. And there's no water down here, that's fine. Um, and then we have to put all these on four ticks to get the longest delay. You could do this another way. You could, uh, I suppose, do uh, Etho Hubble clock or some kind of other clock, but this is just really, really easy and cheap to make in survival. That's it. Turn it on and then punch this one. So this one lights on the, it's in, in subtract mode, and then this one will keep on going. And when it hits the, it turns on the water, and it turns on the water on the next level. And when it goes back, it turns off the water on all levels. And a nice additional thing, which is always good with mob farms, if you turn this off, the subtract mode, then you will have your farm basically turned off because nothing can spawn there now. So you can actually turn off your farm. Nice. All right, so far so good. Uh, I hope you've followed along so far. Um, and now we're going to be building the killing machine. So you get it at level six and you find the middle. You punch out all these blocks and you choose one way to put a hopper um, to have the hoppers go to wherever you want to and you kind of make a collection platform like this and you start by putting two hoppers on top of this and then you grab your blocks put them in front like this then one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. And wheels all around like this. Then you take a lever and you power them, only the one with the powered rails. And this is important when you put down the minecarts a bit later. All, these three all have to be powered. It makes life so much easier. And if you want to, you can use some glass. Uh, at least in survival, that's kind of nice to be able to see that the minecarts are actually uh, working. Like so. And then you take magma and using the middle hopper, you just fill out 
like so. And this one is already there. It's the iron bar. You have to have a campfire to put underneath it like so. And then it's time for the redstone. And it really isn't much redstone. It's just redstone torches almost spammed around like this. And then if we go up, we place a row of blocks. It's, it could be any blocks as long as it's solid blocks on top of them like this. like this and then it's time to have a sticky piston and it needs to line up with that bomb work it has to be one further in like this and you it doesn't matter which side you have three on as long as it's three uh, opposite three and one opposite one so, like this, and like this. Then it's time to put in the magma blocks. And we just put them there, where these are, like so. And and kind of just fill it up like this. Then we take two rows of magma blocks. I mean, you could just more. It's not like um, it's not that difficult to get magma blocks when you're in the nether anyway. But um, we just take two rows because this is built for survival, and two rows is enough. It works. And final touch is pressure plates. We just spam a row of pressure plates down here. So that every time a mob hits one of them, it fires the pistons. And these were just helper blocks. So we can take those away. And then on the sides where you have one, only one piston, you will flank it like this with a block. One there, and one there, which means that even if you step in this corner, this will be these two will be fired. Step in this corner, these two will be fired. And basically, all that's left is to put in the minecart. And let's try that, see how that goes. That didn't go well, so let's try it here. That's what I'm talking about. So, this is going, and this is going, and if you go down there, you get crushed or burned or whatever. So, that is the killing mechanism all done. Now, another thing you have to do is down here, it would be a good idea to slab it all off so nothing spawns in here because even though the light level is high, even though you light it up, uh, slimes will spawn down here. So uh, slab it up, but I was too lazy in my survival world, so I just used water and you can do that, but uh, then you will have to protect um, every lever because um, yeah, it's redstone and it gets washed off when it's when it's wet. So and on this next level, you also have to have the final uh, water pushing the the mobs into the chamber, and there has to be three blocks free for uh, every mob to be able to fall, and that's kind of this way it is. That's kind of what I've. Um, 
try to show here that you kind of have three blocks one two three and this is of course in the bottom that also needs to be dug out for that layer so I've already done that and extended it and I've put in a row of these and all you have to do is place water there and water there and it will go straight to the edge and uh, then just put water 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 and on this side as well water 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 nothing specific or special in the corners and that should work out great I really hope that I covered everything and uh, that you're able to make this farm in your own world. I think it's a bloody good farm uh, and it really works in a single player survival world. So uh, hope you liked it. Enjoy. And if you like the video, please leave it a like. And if you're not subscribed, do so eventually. And occasionally I make... Hello, slimy. I make... Uh, hello. You will get notified when I make a new video. That's what I wanted to say. Bye. <laughs>